the Undead Unleashed Commander deck for Arena. Hey everyone, it's VM Campos, Magic Fan. I love Commander, you love Commander. I love Arena, you love Arena. And what I wanted to do was to put the brand new Wilhelt, the Rot Cleaver Commander deck from Innistrad Midnight Hunt onto Arena. It's not a one-to-one -one conversion of that Commander deck in paper into Arena. I guess you can play it on this ancient software known as Magic Online. But if you want to play it on the more modern Magic Arena, you have to make some substitutions. And that's what this video is all about. What are the Arena equivalents using the full historic card pool that we need to apply to this Paper Commander product? Check the description for the full downloadable Arena deck list totally for free. Just check the description. And I'd also like to hear your changes, your upgrades to this deck. We could do a lot because again, we're not going to get a one-to-one -one transition from the paper version of the deck to the arena version. But I think this one is a cool, fun, powerful, interesting, on-topic, synergistic version for arena. Let's check it out. All right, so switching over to Arena right here, I've got the deck loaded up. I've also got a cool spreadsheet where you can see the original deck versus the Arena deck. You can get that in the description and the full downloadable Arena deck list in the description. Now, spoiler alert, there are a lot of cards that don't translate to Arena. They just don't exist. There are a lot of cards that also deal with multiplayers. They don't exactly exist. As I was putting the deck together, I, I would see a card and think, wow, that's an amazing card. I would love it on Arena. Whoops, it would break Arena. So I've got plenty of substitutions in the deck. I'm going to talk about each one of them. And I think we still can create a very cool deck that works well on Arena. Close enough, I call this the Wilhelt sort of deck. Number one, spoiler alert, we do not have Wilhelt the Rot Cleaver on Arena. We've got two possibilities, however. The obvious possibility is to have Narfi, Betrayer King, who is a zombie lord. Besides that, it doesn't synergize as well as Wilhelt, but it's a zombie lord and it's in our color, so that's what I picked here. A second possibility is actually Kel's Fight Fixer. She has this great synergy with sacrificing things when things die and so forth. That could be a possibility as well to helm the deck. But I'm going with Narfi, the Betrayer King. I did the math and it's about 53% of cards that are not found on Arena. And we'll see what the equivalents are, in my opinion. Now, we do have Liliana Death's Majesty as the Planeswalker that's in the original deck found here as well. She makes zombies, synergizes. Okay, perfect. Keep it in the deck. Then we have a bunch of instants and sorceries. So in the instants and sorceries, I've pretty much removed all of the card draw spells. In a 1v1 game, card draw is important, but removal is more important. It's just one opponent, 1v1. It's, it's more cutthroat. In a four-player game, you can fly under the radar a little bit doing your stuff, drawing cards, no one cares. In 1v1, all of those card draw spells, they've been cut. They, they, they don't help you as much. They've been replaced with uh, removal spells. So just going down the list here of the removal spells. Doomblade, Feed the Swarm, Cast Down, Heartless Act, Power Word Kill. Notice all of those are the amazing two mana instants. Gotta love those. We've got Vona's Hunger, which causes opponents to sacrifice. If you ascend, they sacrifice even more. Bantu's Last Reckoning, in, in case we need to do a big board wipe. Be careful, though, because you get tapped out for a turn. We have Targeted Removal with Eto Extinction, which also targets Planeswalkers, gives you a little bit of Surveil action. Vraska's Contempt exiles a Planeswalker or a creature, gains you some life, and then a big old board wipe, Blood on the Snow. This is amazing. You pay up to six mana, and then you can return something from the graveyard directly to the battlefield. Spoiler alert, the mana base has been upgraded to be all snow coverts. Because you do a board wipe, but you get something of yours back. Pretty amazing. A couple more instants and sorceries that do synergize with the deck. Okay, we've got Haunting Voyage. This card's amazing. You can either return a creature from your graveyard to the battlefield, but if you foretell it, you return all creatures of that type to the battlefield. This whole deck is zombies, basically. So bring all those zombies from your graveyard back onto the battlefield. So many ETB effects. I love it. Rise of the Dark Realms is even more amazing. Nine mana, and you get to get creatures from all graveyards onto the battlefield under your control. Hail Liliana. 
And surprisingly, one of the cars that was in the original build that is on Arena is Dark Salvation. Black XX, so you gotta do a little bit of math here. Target player, obviously yourself, creates X, 2-2, two, two, black zombie creature tokens, then up to one target creature gets minus one, minus one until end of turn for each zombie that player controls. So if you wanna make eight zombies, you need 16 mana. You know, you gotta do your math here. More appropriately, you'll probably be doing four, three, four, five types of zombies. Okay, it's six, eight, or ten mana. You get a lot of zombies, a lot of zombies energy in this deck. Moving over to the mana rocks. Okay, who boy, this was the most uh, different than the original build. We don't have Soul Ring, we don't have Charcoal Diamond, all of those uh, amazing mana rocks. We have Arcane Signet, so that, okay, that, that makes the cut. We've got Cold Steel Heart. Uh, two mana artifact, choose a color, it sticks to that one color. Guardian Idol, it's a two mana colorless, but it's mana ramp and it's a living artifact. Mindstone, two mana gives you one colorless, but then you can crack it later for a card. Ornithoptera Paradise, two mana, gives you mana of any color. It's also a, a blocker, it's a 0-2 flying blocker. And those are all the two mana, mana rocks on Arena. Obviously, I would love to have Soul Ring, actually not really banned turn one Soul Ring, um, and I would love to have Charcoal Diamond and all those other great things, but we just don't have them on Arena. So the next closest thing is to get as many of the relevant two mana artifacts. And I've got them here. We've also got a few three mana artifacts. Midnight Clock is amazing. Play it as soon as you can. Build some counters onto it. When it strikes 12, you get a whole brand new hand of seven cards and shuffle everything from your graveyard back to the library. I love it. And then good old Demir Locket. It's within the colors that we need. Three mana gives you blue or black. Later on, pay four draw two cards off of it if you don't need more mana. Moving over to the enchantments, we do have the Dreadhorde Invasion built into Arena. I make a, an army token every single turn and it gets bigger and bigger and eventually gains lifelink. We do have Liliana's Mastery, which gives all your zombies plus one plus one, no matter how they get created. And we've got a lot of ways to create zombies and the newfangled decayed zombies are also affected by this. Give all your zombies plus one and make two zombies for your trouble for five mana. And with Open the Graves, you will be able to make more zombies. Whenever a non-token creature you control dies, create a black zombie creature token. So as your regular zombies die, they come back as zombies. Zombies upon zombies, that's a little bit of flavor fail there. But this makes more zombies. That's part of the original deck. Other enchantments, we don't really have any of the new curses that are in the paper deck. And those curses are amazing. But here's the ones that we do have on Arena. Curse of Surveillance. Five mana, enchant your opponent at the beginning of it, blah, blah, blah. If you read that, basically you draw a card. You draw a card for every curse, every enchantment curse on the opponent. At the very least, you're going to be drawing one. There's two curses in this deck. You could be drawing two extra cards at the end of your turn. The other curse is the Trespasser's Curse. Two mana, whenever a, a creature enters the opponent's battlefield, you gain one life, they lose one life. So that's with summoning or just putting creatures onto the battlefield, generating tokens and so forth. Get both of these curses on at the same time for double the amazingness. Ghoulish Procession is the next enchantment. Whenever one or more non-token creatures die, create a 2-2 black zombie, this happens only once. So whenever anyone's non-token creatures die, like the opponents, you get a zombie. Uh, even on their turn, their turn or your turn. Now, one of the cards that I really miss in this deck, Rooftop Storm. You get to cast zombie spells for free once you cast that expensive enchantment. And there's actually an infinite combo, but with a Sererak, which is in the deck. In the original paper version, if you put a Sererak into the deck, you can infinitely play that amazing buddy, and it just keeps draining the opponent over and over and over as you go into the as you go into the dungeon. We don't have free spells on Arena exactly. The closest is as foretold. Three mana, mythic rare. Every upkeep, you put one counter on it, and then you can cast spells of that or less once per turn. So one free spell per turn is great. Rooftop Storm is greater, but it's not an arena. Next up, creatures. Many of the amazing creatures that are in paper are not on arena, but I've got my own equivalents right here. So if we look at mana cost order, Lampet of Death's Vigil, sacrifice a creature, each opponent loses one life, you gain one life. There's going to be various sack outlets, various sacrifice outlets in this deck, because you're going to have a lot of zombie tokens. Sacrifice them. Maybe after the decay zombie does its damage, respond with sacrificing to do the extra bit of damage and gain life. 
Priest of Forgotten Gods, sacrifice two of your zombie tokens. Then the player loses two life, sacrifices one of their creatures. And then you add two black mana to do more shenanigans. Graveyard Marshal, double black mana, it's a 3-2. Three, 3 mana, exile a creature from your graveyard, make more zombies. Once those zombies in the graveyard have outlived their usefulness, make them into more zombies to have more usefulness. Undead Augur is a card that is in the original deck, double black, it's a 2-2. Two, two. Zombie Wizard, whenever Undead Augur or another zombie you control dies, draw a card, lose one life. Those zombies are going to become so much card draw, you won't believe it. Battle Stitch Scob, this is one of the many lords that are in the original deck. And we've got some equivalents, and some not, some that I really miss in paper, and some that are cool on Arena. Battle Stitched Scab is a 2-3, it gives your, your other zombies plus 1 plus 0. Get all of these lords on at once and you're giving like plus 6 plus 6 to all your zombies. Poppet Stitcher's pretty cool. 3 mana, 2-3 human wizard. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery, create a zombie with Decayed. At the beginning of your upkeep, if you control three or more creature tokens, you may transform Poppet Stitcher. You could decide to do this or not. If you do flip it over, you get the artifact. Creature tokens you control lose all abilities and have base power and toughness three. What does that mean? They lose Decayed if you flip over to the Poppet Factory. And instead of being two twos, they're now three threes. They still continue to be zombies, so your lords still help them. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may transform Puppet Factory. So either build a bunch of zombies on the front side, or make them into 3-3s three on the back side. Very cool card. Mythic Rare. Psymaster Thopterus is going to be an honorary zombie producer. Every time you cast an artifact, you create a Thopter. We want Psy here because he's only 3 mana. He makes tokens. Those tokens can be sacrificed to do various things. They're flyers. And also you sacrifice those artifacts to draw cards. So we will turn Psy over to the dark side in our zombie deck. Here we go. Acerarak, the Archlich. Three mana, zombie wizard, it's a 5-5. Five five. That wall of text basically tells you if you cast it and don't complete the Tomb of Annihilation, it bounces back to your hand to be recast again. The big brain deck tech is to go through the Lost Mine of Fandelver. I swear every time I see that it makes me think Lost Mine of Panhandler. But you go through here and you go through the Dark Pool, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. This is the infinite combo in paper where we have Rooftop Storm to let you cast zombies for free as many times as you want. Go through this infinitely, infinite combo, you defeated all your opponents. You can make infinite goblins, infinite scry, infinite treasures, infinite drain their life. And then infinite draw your cards. We don't have that infinite combo here on Arena. Once again, the closest thing is as foretold. Once we get to three and more counters on it, you'll be able to cast Acerarak once per turn, but free spells are free spells. Diagraph Colossus is in the original deck. It's in here as well. It's a 2-2 for 3 mana. It enters with plus 1s based on the number of zombies in your graveyard. And whenever you cast a zombie spell, create another zombie. You're going to see a lot of this synergy with automatic ETBs versus about zombies, about them dying, about casting them, all that good stuff. Synergy. Fleshbag Marauder is in the original deck. And this has existed in a couple of other cards before, but here it has synergy because it's a it's a zombie. So it's a 3 mana, 3-1, three, when it enters, each player sacrifices a creature. If this is the only creature, it sacrifices itself, it does your graveyard shenanigans. If you've got one of those thopters or other tokens, sacrifice that, the opponent sacrifices their thing, such as their indestructible commander or indestructible creature. This gets around indestructibility. It's a sacrifice. It's got some epic art. Liliana's Devotee is one of the lords. This gives zombies plus one plus zero. Whenever one of your creatures dies at the end of the turn, you may pay one in a black, you make another zombie. These do not have decay. More zombies, more good. Lord of the Accursed, another lord. It's in the original deck, three mana, two, three. Other zombies get plus one. Pay one in a black, all zombies gain menace for the final attack. Midnight Reaper, also in the original deck, 3 mana, 3-2, three, whenever a non-token creature you control dies, it deals 1 damage to you and you draw a card. Spark Reaper, 3 mana, 2-3, two, three, pay 3, sacrifice a creature or planeswalker, you gain 1 life, you draw a card. There you go, those decayed zombies, right before they die, sacrifice them, draw cards, gain life. Vizier of the Scorpion, 3 mana, it's a 1-1, one, one, but it amasses, it makes a different type of zombie token that can get bigger and bigger. And then zombie tokens you control have death touch. Zombie tokens 
you control have death touch. Not only will this army have death touch, any other zombies you create from any other means are also death touchy, even if they're just tutus. Any zombie tokens. Uh, this vizier is amazing. Death Baron, beautiful art on this. I actually have a foil version signed by Mark Rosewater, not showing off, when I went over to San Diego Comic Con. Now I am showing off. Three mana, two, two. Skeletons you control and other zombies you control get plus one, plus one, and have death touch. Again, lots of great lords in this deck. Gleaming Overseer, another amass creature. Amass for one, you get a one, four. Zombie tokens you control have hexproof and menace. So all of the zombies you're creating are hexproofed and menace. Sphinx of Foresight, this is a flyer. He's got some really cool ability here. If it's in your opening hand, you get to scry three right away on turn zero. After that, once you've got it on the battlefield, you've got a great flyer, plus a scry ability every single turn. Here's another honorary zombie. Vizier of Many Faces, another honorary zombie, or an honorary elf, or an honorary anything. Four mana, it's a zero zero when it enters. Make a copy of any creature on the battlefield. So copy your opponent's best creature, or one of your own good creatures. Be careful, the legend rule still applies. You cannot create two of the same thing. Don't create two narfies. You can have a bad time, but you can copy their legendary creature, no problem. You can then embalm it to play it again later for five mana. Draugr Necromancer, I love this one. Four mana, it's a four four. It's basically Leyline of the Void on a creature, but then you get to cast those creatures. Erebos the Bleak-Hearted. Yes, the Lord of the Underworld, come to me. Four mana, five, six, indestructible god, enchantment. It doesn't even fit. Legendary enchantment creature god, indestructible. As long as your devotion to black is less than five, this isn't a creature. It's just an enchantment, indestructible, so take that, disenchant. Whenever another creature you control dies, you may pay two life if you do draw a card. Or pay one and a black as many times as you want, plus sacrifice, target creature gets minus two, minus one. Not only can you minus two, minus one your opponent's creatures, and I did that expertly one time to wipe out their air defenses, but then you can also pay the life to draw cards off of the off of that cannon fodder. Whisper, Blood Liturgist. Four mana, two, two, legendary creature, human cleric. Tap, sacrifice two creatures, such as your tokens, return target creature card from your graveyard back to the battlefield. Keep them coming back for more to sacrifice some of those peons. Death Priest of Mirku, four mana, Tiefling Cleric. I don't even know what a Tiefling is. Tell me in the comments, what's a Tiefling? There are two, two. Skeletons, vampires, and zombies. You control get plus one, plus one, another Lord. At the beginning of your end step, if a creature died this turn, you may pay one, generic. If you do, create a one, one black skeleton creature token. Not a zombie, but get on the squad skeletons. You're close enough. Eternal Skylord, here's another one, another one of these amazing Eternals. Um, five mana, three, three, zombie wizard. When Eternal Skylord enters, amass two. So you add two to whatever army you have or create a brand new two, two. And what's this? Zombie tokens you control have flying. All your zombie tokens, your decay zombies, all of them now will be able to fly. We're going to build up an amazing flying hexproof menace death touch army of zombies. The opponent is in a lot of trouble. Diagraph Horde, 5 mana, it's a 3-4, make 2, 2-2 two, two zombie decayed tokens, and exile some stuff from their graveyard. Get rid of that graveyard shenanigans stuff that they're doing. Plus, more zombies. Ghoul Collar Gisa. So the original build has Gisa and Geralf. Uh, we don't have those on Arena, but we've got different versions of Gisa. Here we have Ghoul Collar Gisa. 5 mana, 3-4, human wizard. Black, tap, sacrifice another creature, create X, 2-2, two, two, black zombie creature tokens, where X is the sacrificed creature's power. True story, my opponent rage quit when I summoned Gisa. Next turn, I summoned Narfi. I sacrificed Narfi to Gisa. I made four 2-2 two, two zombies. The opponent rage quit. I let Narfi go to the graveyard, where I can then just resummon it for three snow mana. The opponent rage quit. True story. God Eternal Bantu, I love you. Five mana, five six menace. Whenever it dies, when it gets removed from the battlefield, put it back onto the, your library to cast it again. When you cast it, sacrifice as many other permanents, including your lands, and draw cards off of those sacrifices. Now be careful, do this before you attack with your decayed creatures. You will not be able to trigger this when they trigger their own deaths. Sir Conrad the Grim. 5 mana, 5-4, five, legendary human knight. Whenever, okay, just buckle up right here. Whenever another creature dies, or a creature card is put into a graveyard from anywhere other than the battlefield, or a creature card leaves your graveyard, 
Sir Conrad the Grim deals 1 damage to each opponent. Basically whenever creatures go to the battlefield, not exile, but when they go to the battlefield, from a discard, from dying, from milling, damage them. And how can we speed that up? 2 mana, each player mills a card. You're filling your graveyard with cool stuff, you're filling their graveyard with damage. The Scarab God, I love you too. I can't decide, do I love the Scarab God more or Bantu? Don't tell them that I love each of them equally. 5 mana, 5-5 five, five legendary creature God. At the beginning of your upkeep, each opponent loses X life and you scry X, where X is the number of zombies you control. You've got a bunch of zombies on the battlefield, you're going to be scrying for days, gaining life for days. But here's where this really shines. 2 blue-black, exile target creature from any graveyard. Create a token that's a copy of it, except it's a 4-4 black zombie. Turn their little Lana War elf into a 4-4 monstrosity on your side of the battlefield. And if this dies, return it to your hand at the beginning of the next end step. Not quite indestructible, but it keeps coming back for more. Harvester of Souls, 6 mana, 5-5, five, five, Death Touch. Whenever another non-token creature dies, you draw. You may draw a card. I really don't see many reasons why you may not want to, unless you're about to deck yourself. That's a glorious way to go. Drowned in cards. You get more cards and your things die. Noxious Gear Hulk, 6 mana, 5-4. It's got Menace. When it enters the battlefield, you may destroy a target creature. Most of the time you will be sniping your opponent's creatures there. And then you gain life based on its toughness. And lastly, let's look at the lands. The upgrade that I did here, number one, is to put snow-covered lands. I put all four of the two snow lands that we want uh, from Kaldheim here. I don't have any of the, of the other snow-covered lands. I want to buy those in the bundle at some point. But the snow-covered ones from Kaldheim are cool. So we've got the little boat in the ice. Then we've got the uh, ice pillar. And then we've got the snow-covered swamp. It looks really cool. And then I really like those cairns that are all covered in snow. So it's the same number of lands as the original build. We also have the Bojuka Bog that's in the original build. Keep it in there. It enters tapped. But when it enters, exile the opponent's graveyard. In case they're doing graveyard shenanigans we want to get rid of. We've got a bunch of dual lands. Okay, clear water pathway. Either it's a blue source or a black source when you cast it. Mana fixing there. Drowned Catacomb. Enters the battlefield tapped. Unless you control an island or a swamp, you get either blue or black mana. Ice Tunnel. You get either blue or black mana. Enters tapped. It's a snow source. Shipwreck Marsh. One of the newest lands now. Here's the opposite where it enters the battlefield tapped unless you control two or more other lands. Temple of Deceit was in the original build. T comes in tapped. You scry. You get one mana of these colors. Watery Grave. It's the shock land. You get either blue or black mana. It comes in tapped or not. You can pay two mana if you need to or not if you don't. Command Tower gives you a mana of any color that you need. Perfect. And then we've got the Unclaimed Territory. It gives you colorless mana, but then you choose a creature type, zombie, and then it gives you the mana that you need at that moment. In addition to the Command Tower, we've got Rupture Spire, which gives you a mana of any color. You have to first pay one to keep the land, and then after that, it gives you one color of any color. And then I added the Fetch Land. So if Terramorphic Expanse, crack it, go get a basic land of your choice, comes in tapped. Evolving Wilds is the exact same thing. We've got a bunch more different artworks. And then of course, the newest one, Fabled Passage. It comes in untapped if you already have four lands. Go get that basic land, perfectly fix your mana base. Well, it's not exactly Vilhelt, I think this deck comes together pretty well. And that was the deck. As I said, it's not a one-to-one -one conversion from paper to arena. There's a lot of powerful cards in paper, a lot of cards in paper for a multiplayer aspect that are just not on arena and would just break arena if they were on, on arena. But one day we're going to have that four player historic brawl and then we will all be living in the glorious heaven of Innistrad. Uh, wait a minute, Innistrad is the opposite of heaven. But anyway, we might have full four player brawl on Arena one day. In the meantime, tell me what you thought about these upgrades. What would you improve? Where was I wrong? Where was I right? Tell me about it in the comments. 
download the full deck list for yourself down in the comments as well, and tell me what you thought of the deck. If you enjoyed the video, consider pressing the join button right here in YouTube to chip in a few bucks to your old pal VM Campos for making all of these deck techs for you. And every single week, some brand new material on the YouTube. I'm sure you're subscribed and you really enjoy the material. So how about you join the VMC crew for 99 cents at a time to keep me funded, to keep me motivated. If you can't quite pledge at the moment, no worries. Simply like, comment, share, subscribe, ring the bell, battle a minute tour, tell all your friends and family about these great videos on my YouTube channel. I would really appreciate it. This has been VM Campos, and I will see you in the next magic video.